Africa Moloeni. I am thrilled to be back for season two of the Inside Track. Today we will be shining a spotlight on the missing COVID relief funds earmarked for the arts and entertainment industry. And we will be joined by some heavy hitters in studio, including Sandra Prince Lu, Peter Turin, and Tamim Bongo. We will also hear about the sit-in staged at the National Arts Council by increasingly desperate musicians, actors and performers. But first, we take a look at the week in headlines. President Saul Ramaphosa still has to decide whether to suspend the Western Cape Judge President John Chope. That's after Chope was found guilty of gross misconduct by a judicial tribunal over the weekend. The DA now says it will approach the South African Human Rights Commission to probe government's slow COVID-19 vaccine rollout strategy. The reality is that there's also been a series of actions and inactions that government has not taken when it comes to the rollout of this vaccine. The commission is revealing that the ANC policy of cater deployment is the bedrock of our misery in this country. This system of job reservation sets aside powerful positions in the civil service for ANC members who have proven themselves loyal to the party rather than to the country. We are here today to listen, to come and uh, see for ourselves the issues around the language policy at Stellenbosch University and to show very clearly that this is not a white and black issue, that Afrikaans is a diverse language. In fact, the most people who speak Afrikaans are not white South Africans. So this is not a race issue. This is a mother tongue issue. This is a constitutional issue. This week in the headlines, the DA takes government's failing vaccine rollout plan to the South African Human Rights Commission. A leaked audio clip of the ANC leadership meeting brought us behind the scenes of the Zuma and Ramaphosa love affair. 13 years later, Judge John Chope is finally found guilty of misconduct. But first, the fight for mother tongue education continues. On Friday, J leader John Stenazen joined a march protesting Stellenbosch University's sidelining of Afrikaans as an equally recognized South African language like all others. It was great to see people from all walks of life standing up for what is right. Subsequently, we also submitted a petition to the university with thousands of your signatures. We believe that all of Mzansi's languages deserve equal protection and promotion. Western Cape Judge President John Chope is finally found guilty of misconduct. 13 years later, a judicial tribunal has found him guilty of attempting to influence two justices of the Constitutional Court to rule in favor of Jacob Zuma. Chope has been involved in numerous scandals since then, from allegedly using racial slurs to tampering with witnesses. An independent judiciary is the cornerstone of our constitutional democracy. And that is why the Judicial Services Commission cannot let this matter drag on any longer and must move to impeach him. Our judiciary deserves to rid itself of the Chope stain immediately. In a leaked audio recording from the ANC meeting, President Ramaphosa openly declares his admiration and respect for Jacob Zuma. He said he sees Zuma as his true leader. The issue here is not whether or not Ramaphosa respects Zuma. The real issue is that he disrespects South Africans and the constitution by not speaking out against Zuma's corrupt actions. The clip proves once and for all that Ramaphosa is one person in public and another entirely within the ANC. Speaking of corrupt cadres, here's a chance to make your voice heard. Decades of cater deployment saw the friends, the family, and lovers of the politically connected appointed to government jobs. The DA wants to stop this with our end cater deployment bill, which will make it illegal to hire politically connected cadres in government positions. Public comments are now open and we urge all South Africans to make their voices heard. The mess that is our vaccine rollout program has been front and center again this week. We are in April and not even one quarter of South Africa's healthcare workers have been vaccinated. Other countries worse off than South Africa economically, like Zimbabwe, like Rwanda, are inoculating their citizens while we're only still in the trial phase. This is a human rights violation, and that is why the DA has now taken the fight to the South African Human Rights Commission. 
They must investigate this criminally slow rollout. People are dying, the economy is in shambles, and the only way to stop continuous lockdowns is an effective vaccine rollout plan. And finally, some good news. Jacob Zuma must pay back the money again. Yesterday, his appeal against a 2019 court order obtained by the DA was dismissed and he must now pay back money the state spent on his personal legal fees. Public office bearers cannot treat our taxes like their personal piggy banks. Even former presidents have to respect the law. In the spotlight this week, with South Africa's arts industry decimated by the world's hardest lockdown, which continues to be enforced by our national government, we shine light on the missing 300 million rand in the arts relief funding. And we talk to iconic South African stars about the hard reality the industry faces. Let's take a look at this story in the spotlight. <music> say that they continue to be left high and dry by the government. It has been one of the hardest hit sectors since lockdown regulations came into effect in March. Many of these artists did not receive this once-off payment due to impractical bureaucratic and administrative processes. We struggled a lot with the criteria. Who gets to get money? How much do they get? When do they get? Who gets qualified? A group of artists are at the union buildings in Pretoria to plead with President Sul Ramaphosa to allow create creative events to take place. What really killed me in the beginning was the uncertainty of it. It was a week by week uncertainty. It has left a lot of people with resentment. People were very disappointed. People were discouraged. We do exist. We are live performers and we have been ignored for the longest time. Seven months is a very long time to not even get 50 rand coming into your pocket. Well, a whopping 300 million rand that was ring fenced to help artists as part of a COVID-19 relief has gone missing. Artists are made up of entertainers, musicians who have vowed to continue a stage uh, sit-in at the National Arts Council until all their demands are met. What we are looking for was transparency and how they responded was not in good faith. South African artists have been exercising their right to protest peacefully for more than 40 days by staging a sit-in at the National Arts Council offices in an attempt to get answers on promised funding from national government to the tune of 300 million rand. This funding was originally committed to artists as a means of relief from the wholesale shutdown of the industry when the lockdown first hit. Many artists are very literally on the brink of starvation as they've been unable to work for over a year thanks to national government's heavy-handed lockdown which has destroyed jobs and the lives of millions of South Africans. We ask the question, where is the 300 million rand? Can South Africa's treasured acting and performance and arts industry ever recover? And what is the do DA doing to help see justice for this group of South Africans? To discuss all of this and more, we are joined in studio today by actress Sandra Prinsloo, producer and theatre owner Peter Turin. And joining us on Zoom will be the DA's Deputy Shadow Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Veronica van Dijk, who's been driving this issue, and Tami Agambongo, who's one of the artists who's staging a sit-in at the National Arts Council offices. First up, we're going to be having this discussion. Thank you so much for joining me, um, uh, Peter and Sandra. And we've got our, uh, our, our guests on Zoom. Sandra, I'm going to start with you. I mean, what is the situation like with artists at the moment? Um, you know, as one of the iconic uh, artists in the country, it must break your heart to see what is happening in the industry. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think everybody thought that it might be a three-month thing. It might be... Uh, maybe a six-month thing, but nobody thought it was going to be over a year. Mm. And to have the rug pulled from under your feet in an insecure industry anyway, because all of us are freelancers, we don't have security, we don't have secure jobs, we don't have, most of the actors don't have pension funds because they can't afford it. You mm. know, people keep saying, why do the artists not 
uh, invest in pension funds? Why do they not invest in this and that? Because they simply cannot afford it, because the industry is so unstable. It's so difficult for them to actually have resources mm. to, to draw on. So when, when we were just told that everything is shut down, I think a huge depression yeah. set in as well. Um, and a lot of actors, of course, and musicians, and, and you know, and we talk about actors, musicians, mm -hmm. dancers, singers, it's not only that, they're technicians, yeah. they're designers. I mean, it's a whole industry. And you find that so many people have to, for instance, move back in with parents if they can find them. Others are starving. Um, others, we, we all try and find a way to survive. Yeah. And if you can do things on your own, then you can maybe just survive. Yeah. But the point of the arts is to be, it's a collective creativity. Yeah. It's not something that you want to do in isolation. And of course you need audiences, yeah. you need audiences. Yeah. And we cannot have audiences, we can have very restricted audiences. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's the big problem yeah. is the, the uncertainty. And then also I think the, the measures that have been put in place have not been thought through. Yeah. And I mean, to, to Sandra's point very quickly, Peter, I mean, people don't always quite understand that, you know, this is not just about opening the in entertainment industry. This is about people's livelihoods, right? Well, of course, Sandra yes. has put it very well there. And what, what we need the public to understand is on the 15th of March last year, mm. the curtain came down. They said, you are shut. Yeah. That meant that Everybody in our industry, everybody, theater, television, film, whatever you do, you were flung out sure. into nothing, mm. nothing. And most artists, most actors work week to week. They get paid on a Friday for the week's work sure. that they've done. No play, no pay. That's the reality of our industry. So the entire industry was out in the cold. Yeah, yeah. In, on the 15th of March, yes. we are now in April, yeah. the following year. Yeah, yeah. Now, we understand it is COVID, and I think the actors, the artists, the technicians have done amazingly well yeah. to somehow survive yeah. so far. Can't go on. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. But, no. but now to this point, I mean, Peter, I want to come here because the, the reason why government even had the safety net of having 300 million for the disbursement of, of those funds, of COVID relief funds, is because of this very nature of, of the, of the industry Absolutely. that is, you know, unsecure for yes. artists. But now, it, what has gone wrong? But you see, uh, the, the president has brilliantly come up with 300 million to help the industry. Mm. Bravo for that. We were thrilled to hear. Now, according to what I understood at the time, that was to provide money to create opportunities for work for artists, technicians, and so on. So he gave the 300 million to the Minister of Arts and Culture, who promptly, he has a whole department, yes. who thought this through, goodness only knows, yes. he gave it, well, they gave they it. Clearly they did not think it through. That's clearly. the whole point. Yes, the they problem. gave it to the NAC. Mm. So straight away, I now, uh, I was one of the first NAC members when the first Arts Council was established yes. 20 years ago. Yes. So I know how it works. Yes. I know what goes on. I know what should have gone on. Yes. And clearly the CEO of uh, the Arts Council didn't have a clue. Suddenly she got 300 million. Sure. What did she do with it? Yeah. Uh, if I can just backtrack for one minute, I understand that the NAC are given their own budget yes. of 100 million a year, their own budget. Yes. Mm -hmm. Out of that- Outside of this 300 million. Absolutely, yes. Yes. absolutely. And have been getting this for years. Yes. From that, they pay for the running of the NAC yes. and then they fund the arts. Yes. And they do two funding sessions a year. So the system is then set up for two funding sessions, let's say for 35 million a time. Yeah. Very, figures are important, yes. maybe 35 million a time. Here comes the minister and dumps 300 million on them. Mm. Who? is experienced to do. To run such a fund, yes. uh, to be able to disperse it. Now, to. I can tell you from personal experience, because I chaired the theatre panel for six and a half years, it's easy. Mm. You don't have to have any qualifications. Mm. You need some experience of our industry yes, and yes. you need to be able to understand a budget. Yeah. Yes. So the NAC had the ability to call on 
any of the people who've served over the last 25 years. Yeah, and there are many, yep. and there are many. Many, many. many. Yes. Yes. Could yeah. we just have five of you to come in and, and deal with it? Deal with it, yeah. Mm. Mm. I could have done it with five other people so that there's transparency. Yeah. In two weeks, we yeah. could have read the applications. This is good, this is making sense, this will help 50 people at a time. Save livelihoods. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, give, and then the, back to the department there yeah. at the NSE, send the money yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Well, bloody incompetence is all I can it's say. It is incompetence. But I think it's more than that because mm. with the minister said the money has not been stolen, it's mm. been misappropriated. Now, please, can you explain to me well, yeah. what the difference yeah. is between yeah. misappropriation, where, to whom, we want to know these yeah. things. And ultimately, it's not in the hands of the people who need it the most. And no. ultimately, it's not saving no. people's lives and livelihoods. Um, Veronica, I want to bring you in here. I mean, as the DAMP on this issue, you've driven the issue, you've been to the NAC, um, you've met with artists. What was this money meant for and why ha Why have we ended up here? Thank you, Sylvie. Uh, besides, I must just start with, um, besides the regional 150 million COVID-19 relief funding launched in April and August, September 2020, the president also in October 2020 made available this presidential economic stimulus program geared towards employment initiatives for artists, creatives, the heritage sector workers and cultural workers. And um, the announcement to the sector was that 300 million would be dispersed in two streams. Mm. 100 million was set aside for job retention in the cultural and creative institutions and organizations and 200 million for job retentions or projects. Uh, funds had been to be spent by 31st March 2021, meaning the projects had to be concluded. On this date, however, not even a third, only 93.5 million were paid to 686 uh, beneficiaries. The new council that then started in January 2021 found that the PSP was oversubscribed so instead of 300 million, the previous council approved applications to the value of 600 million, leading a 300 million shortfall. So 1,374 applicants were approved successfully for funding, which the new council now wanted to all accommodate within the framework of 600 million, even though only 300 million was made available. Uh, 613 uh, contracts were signed, which the council then tried to unlawfully change to also accommodate the uh, 761 beneficiaries left out. This implied that those who were received to receive, uh, like, say, 25,000 rand over three months for job creation in the second stream would only now receive 10,895 divided by three months, which is not enough to start projects no. as the fund, fund was intended for. Not so, at all. Um, what I can add. Yeah, no, and you understand, there's some of the artists, on the other hand, received more money than they applied for. So now they've changed the deadline for, uh, uh, of project completion um, to the 30th of May uh, 2021 to give the applicants more time to readjust the project uh, timelines. But the last update on the NAC website, that was on 9 April, indicates that just more than 50% of the 300 million has been dispersed so far. So we can understand why the artists are so frustrated. Yeah. But I mean, also, uh, Veronica, I know that you've called for an SIU investigation into the, mis as Sandra says, the misappropriated funds or the missing, you know, 300 million or, or whatever the issues are, because clearly this is not just a logistical, administrative incompetence. There's also real possibility that there is corruption involved. And so, what, what have you done with, with, with regards to this? Yes, first I can mention that um, on the 7th of April, I went to visit the, the artists at the NAC, where they are staging, um, if I can put it, a peaceful sit-in. Um, and they were understandably very emotional and um, need to be paid with urgency. It's long overdue. Um, and many of them are really in dire uh, situation. No food not a roof over the heads, mm. forced to take their children out of school. So payments must be prioritised and uh, the minister must further meet with the artists and negotiate to rebuild the trust that was lost. So on behalf of the DA, I've written numerous letters to the minister as well as the Auditor General, um, Ms. Maluleke, after my visit to the entity uh, to request uh, that she from her side too must urgently institute an independent in, uh, investigation into this uh, alleged malfeasance by the uh, NAC regarding the 300 million PSP. 
16 February, I ask on behalf of the artists why they have not been receiving the funding as a applied for, no feedback. On the 25th of February, after the NAC announced that it would only pay artists half of the funds uh, for contracted projects, breaching the contracts, I yeah. again requested for an uh, in, uh, uh, urgent independent investigation because the DI cannot support this. Um, March the 2nd, again, then I asked the committee uh, chairperson that she must invite the minister, the NAC, the council, to come and report to the committee. I also put the issue of the CEO and the CFO um, um, by the new council on the agenda. 3rd of March expressed again the wish to the minister um, that my questions regarding the PSP issues will result in an investigation. And only after the 24th of March, when I uh, those uh, shocking allegations were made in the Daily Sun, um, I again, with urgency, uh, um, asked that the independent forensic investigation should... Uh, 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 I also had requested that from the uh, for minister. And then on the 28th of March, he actually announced that a forensic investigation uh, will be conducted. Yeah. So from, I can just say, from the DA side, we do and will do what we can to assist our artists. Yeah. Um, I'm further glad to mention that even um, so we were the Department of Sports Culture in the Western Cape under Mr. Andrew Marie is also in full support of our artists. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you, Veronica, and thank you for the work that you're doing. I mean, I, I, I'm i glad that you, you're making this commitment because I think often people think this is now a forgotten industry, not understanding that once again, I mean, this is this is behind all of these things are people with lives, with children, with families, with lives to sustain. Um, and so that I hope then, you know, you've got a plan going forward on how you're going to be holding the minister to account. Yes, um, the minister can no longer postpone and must urgently intervene. If the NAC council and management cannot resolve the issues and the minister does not intervene, the DA will call that he appears before parliament. You know, President Ramaphosa in his State of the Nation address said he wants to be, he wants to be there for those who suffer. I quote, um, I want to lend a hand, send me. It is yeah. therefore strange that the president is so quiet on the matter when he must clearly see, like all of us, how the art sector and our artists are suffering and falling apart. It is, after all, the pres his presidential economic uh, stimulus uh, program relief fund that has been uh, alleg uh, allegedly been uh, mismanaged. Yeah. And it is clear our government on various levels does not value uh, our art sector and the artists, and this yeah. must change. And I mean, okay, so now I just want to bring it back um, to, on, in terms of the, the industry. Sandra, I mean, artists are understandably frustrated. I mean, they're reading all of these things about um, missing funds. Frustration is a mild word. Yes, 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 <laughs> a polite word. But I mean, you know, they, they, you know because now they're reading all of these things. Um, what to, what do, can they make of this? I mean, if, if funds are missing, they're not being going to the to the right people. What way to from now for them? Well, it's, that's the impossible situation, you see, because one cannot plan. You cannot make plans for for anything bigger than small little shows, maybe, and then hope that the theatres will be open still, that 200 people might be allowed or 250 of the theatre. You see, you're not going to do a small show in a big theatre where, where they're going to allow 250 people mm -hmm. or 50% capacity or whatever. You're doing it in small theatres. So the small theatres can maybe just survive, but not not really. Some of them have already closed down, as we know. Sure. But for someone like Peter, how do you plan, Peter? You, yeah. you, you, you can't. can't. You, you just can't. can't. I've planned and torn it up, planned yeah. and torn it up, planned yeah. and torn it up. But the worst part for me yeah. is that this situation was terrible and is terrible. And this money has now made it worse yeah. because of the mess. Yeah. And this mess must be put back on the minister's desk. And yes. there's one way to solve it. You see, what, you, what people don't seem to understand is the NAC wrote to people who applied and said, you have been fortunate, you're getting X amount of money sent out the letters. No. That's a legal document. Yeah. People are sitting with a document that says you will get X. Then suddenly they realised, oops, we're in a mess here. They sent out a second letter. No, you're not getting X, you're only getting Y. Then they sent out a third. No, you're not getting Y, you're getting Z. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had applied and I'd said, they told I was going to get a hundred thousand rands yeah. for a project, I set about employing actors getting it going. Now I'm told I haven't got the money. Yeah. I have to go to the bank 
yeah. to make up the money that these people have incompetently messed up. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it must go right back to the minister. The minister must be told your people that you instructed gave out not 300 million, they gave out 400 million. Yeah. So find it. Yeah, yes. No, absolutely. Yes, absolutely, I agree with you. And Peter, but it, it's worse than that for me. Also, there's no transparency as to who got what no. and why. Yeah. Where are the lists? Why yeah. can't we see what's Precisely. been going on? And public money requ requires that of course. There, be, there be transparency yes. on who's getting what, when, and, and, and what time. Sandra and I, between us, could look at the list and could say these are valid, these are cheating, these people are stealing, and so on. Because yes. You Is just this, have to know your job. You, you just have to know the industry. Mm. Yes, that's thank all. you. And you have to care. I yes. think that's also important. Yes. You actually have to care about the people that are behind and the industry. And be honest. Yeah. For yeah. goodness sake. I promise you the NAC did in the, in the beginning. Yes. When we first started, when we were the first lot, we cared deeply. Mm. We were 17 people who tried our utmost to get the most for the arts. Yeah. Why hasn't that continued? Yeah. Why is it now a free for all? Yeah, yeah. I want to talk to Tammy. Tammy has been uh, one of the artists that have been staging a sit-in at the NAC uh, and, and he's joining us via Zoom. Tammy, thank you so much for making the time. I mean, I, I want you to, to, to almost paint a picture for our audience. What's happening at the, ANC, at the NAC and, you know, and what has made artists so desperate to go and sit in at there for over 40 days? Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, before I introduce myself, I would love to clarify something with regard to the invite. And on behalf of Abashali Base NEC, which is uh, the artists that are there at the NEC, uh, we welcome the invite um, uh, to speak about NEC sitting and issues affecting cultural and creative industry in South Africa. Ever since we started the sit-in, we have a number of organizations, structures, and political parties like TA, EFF, Action SA, SACP, SAF, NUMSA, ASR, uh, WP, etc. And every time we get an invite, we like to make it clear because everyone that has visited us to say this matter for us is not a political matter. It's beyond, and uh, we ourselves as a Basha Libase NAC, we are not aligned in any political uh, party or agenda, but yeah. we want justice to be done in uh, in South African art. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what has been happening, um, Usis Bongilemgoma, who is the president of um, for the Arts and also president of um, SAUSIF, which is South African uh, United and Cultural Creative Industry Federation, decided on the 1st of March on her own personal capacity as an artist to pay visit at the National Arts Council to seek for answers uh, relating to the past. Uh, remember, uh, PESP was meant to happen between 1st of March till 31st of March, yeah. where this uh, 300 million was supposed to, to be spent. So on the 1st, when uh, she went into the National Arts Council to seek for answers, and then they promised, because uh, we had eight initial uh, questions that we, we, we asked them, and then they said on the 3rd of March, which was on Wednesday, they are going to provide some of the answers. So we went, we had a meeting with the acting CEO, Ms. Julie Tipofa, at the NAC uh, boardroom, uh, and then she left that meeting without uh, finishing that meeting, because she said she's going to seek for answers from the board and other NAC management and then she will come back. So today we are in day 43 since we've been occupying here. We are still waiting for that meeting because she never adjourned uh, the meeting. Say the virtuous and ready and armed ready ends are on standby for the artists that have been peacefully and to hear even the acting chairperson of the national board to, to use terms to say the violence will be the last option. So, in so. the artists that have been engaging so peacefully, because as o, o Peter at the studio was saying, uh, COVID-19 has affected our industry badly mm -hmm. since March. And even that 150 million that was set aside by the Department of Sport and, 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 and Culture You've got, uh, they had a first relief, second relief, and now we are talking about third relief. Many artists in South Africa are still even waiting for the first relief funding. Yeah. 
to be given yeah. to them. But we are talking about uh, the debt relief. Yeah. And we are having um, a minister that has been quiet throughout all these things that has been, has been happening. And to up to date, uh, this funding, bear in mind, it was supposed to be finished uh, project by the 31st of March. But this morning, they only announced that they paid $163 million out of the 300 million that was spent. And remember, uh, this money was given to them last year. And yeah. when we are engaging with them, we we'll see how come National Arts Council will receive 15% yeah. uh, towards administration, but they've done a bad job. Yeah. How come National Arts Council are going to benefit from the interest that this money was put to them? So we are, we are still at the National Arts Council and we are very clear, we are not going anywhere. If they want to come and kill us and shoot us while we are peaceful, let it be. We are ready for that. Wow. And, 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 and Tammy, I mean, you know, you, you, you mentioned that the point, the fact that, you know, only half of this money has been dispersed. And I mean, I mean, what is it? Some, some artists have been saying that they literally cannot survive if they're not being able to get any kind of relief from not being able to work. Yeah, and as uh, Peter was saying, uh, originally, bear in mind, it was this was a three months uh, job injection program, uh, and they've set aside like twenty five thousand for three months. Twenty five thousand is not a lot of money, yeah. but it, it was uh, acceptable. But to cut that into uh, by seventy percent, that's an insult. Because bear in mind, it's, it's not only the 10890 In that money, it's not only meant for salaries. Mm. But if you want to do a production, you must pay for rehearsal space. Out of that 10890 you must pay for performance fee. You must do all the administration. So by the end of looking at the salaries that you give people that are involved, you are looking at giving them 2000 to 3000 over a period of three months. Mm. That is an insult. So we can be... Uh, in the industry where we talk about exploitation of artists, we talk about artists dying as paupers, and yet we as government and government entities are adding into that. We are having a government and government entities that don't even respect their laws. And now they expect us, uh, the artists that are in the seat in, to respect the same laws that they can't respect, that can't be right. Yeah. So, I mean, Peter, you know, um, just to bring you in here, Tami has made some solid points and he's Very. saying artists are Very. not going to move yep. um, until this matter is resolved and they've got resolved because for them, remember, it's not just about, you know, fighting a corruption here and there or, or you know, the, it, irris, you know uh, a non-responsive minister. It's about a livelihood. Of course, and they're, they're oh. these people who are sitting in, they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. They deserve to be awarded and rewarded. I can't believe what they're doing. Yes. Uh, bravo, bravo, bravo. I agree. But what upsets me so much is there's usually no money. Mm. There's 300 million. Mm. All you've got to do, Minister, is see that it's distributed, see mm. that it's dealt with honestly, mm. and it gets to where it's meant to be, mm. to help artists, to, to fund projects to happen so that actors, singers, dancers, technicians can be paid. Mm. That's easy. Mm. Do the damn job. Mm. And if you can't do it, you should be fired. Yeah. That's, that, that, as far as I'm concerned, it's the minister. Mm. He has just handed the problem on yeah. and nobody sorted it out. Yeah. I, I, I can't tell you how angry oh. I get because mm. I have mm. sat there at the NAC and I know how easy it is to do this job if you know a little bit about our industry, if you can read a budget, if you can sit with an adding machine and add, how can they say we can't give you what you promised you because now we funded too many projects? A bloody adding, adding machine next yeah. to you would tell yeah. you. Yeah. It's yeah. stupid. Yeah. And I mean, Sandra, I mean, Tammy is talking about how, you know, there was relief at the first relief, second relief, and there's some artists who haven't received a cent. No, yes. nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. You know, and I remember the first relief, I think we got 20,000 for the entire production. Sure. Which meant that 20,000 had to be split amongst everybody who worked on that production, mm. which leaves you with absolutely nothing. Mm. And after that, there's been nothing as far yeah. as I'm, that I know of. Um, and you see, and I think that Tommy is so right there when he says it comes from disrespect. Yeah. Yes. From not understanding yes. the industry, disrespecting the industry, disrespecting the artists, um, not taking us seriously. And I think our artists are so angry now 
that they will demand to be taken yeah. seriously yeah. in yeah. the future. And I agree with Peter. If the minister can't sort it, because it go. is his job, he is the head of that chain of command. If he can't sort it out, he must go, yeah. but he must find that money. Exactly. Yes, he must pay the lot. Yeah. Whatever yes. they said they would pay in the beginning, these incompetent people who did it, yes. he's now got to pay that amount of money yeah. because the people who were told they were getting it have committed it. Yeah. Yeah. They've committed it. Yeah. They've started projects uh, that yes. need to be now Some funded. Some people I know of have completed their projects and have received no money. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. It's shocking. Tammy, I'm going to just uh, one last time to on your side. Um, I just want, I mean, three things you want the people of South Africa to know that you're demanding as the artists who are seated and who are staging the sit-in. Um, you've said, you know, that we're not moving you know, what are the three things that you think sh three things should happen immediately, if not sooner, for artists to at least get some kind of relief? Uh, I think the first one, uh, our minister has been talking about the mismanagement of funds and yet the NAC management and board are disputing that. It shows first uh, the board that we have currently, yeah, it's compromised. They need to go. Uh, the second one, uh, we, we welcome the suspension of the CEO and the, uh, the CFO, but uh, don't forget, Uti, they were also working with some of the senior uh, officials that are there. Uh, they are working with the same uh, board that was there last year. So we also call upon uh, the NAC to be cleaned up. Uh, and then also, obviously, the minister, without doubt, has uh, failed our industry. So he needs also to, to take into account. And in closing, we really appreciate the work that has been done by the portfolio committee, um, including all Mr. Tsepom Hongo. And uh, all, they've been doing amazing work in supporting, including Abo Ringo, Martin Wosi, and other parties. We truly appreciate. And we are still encouraging artists across the country to come and join us so that they can come and witness when uh, the red ends or whoever comes to take us out. We are, we, are, we are very clear. We are peaceful. We don't want any violence. We just want answers. Thank you very much. And we will continue supporting. We will continue supporting um, the efforts to, to get this industry recovered. And we will continue doing so in the channels that are available. And Veronica and Tepo, as, as Tamia says, have been doing great work. But now I just want to talk about the recovery, um, you know, as, as we are about to conclude our conversation, the recovery of the industry. You've been part of it for many, many years, Sandra. Do you think that we can recover from this pandemic and also subsequent mismanagement of, you know, relief funds and the like? I think it's going to be very, very difficult. I do think there'll have to be a huge change of attitude. I think we could do with a minister who's involved, yeah. who understands the arts. I think that is essential. If you've got a job to do, you must at least understand what the job entails. If you don't know what it entails, make an effort and find out. I think we really need people who have their hearts in the right place. That is for me important. The money, of course, is the other thing. Um, it's so hard to say how... I don't know, Peter. I don't know. How are we going to survive this? Maybe The you industry can come is in on its knees. It's mm. as simple as that. Mm. And we understand COVID is a killer. Mm. It's yeah. a killer. And we have to keep the actors safe. We certainly have to keep the audience safe. And the audience won't come in numbers. People talk about social distancing. Every time I hear social distancing from the Minister of Health, I understand it, but my heart sinks because we can't socially distance in the theatre. That means I sit here, there's nobody next to me, there's nobody there, there's nobody in front of me, and there's nobody behind. How do I, as a theatre owner, function when I can only sell a few seats? Yeah. I can't pay for anything. Yeah. What's the answer? We have to wait for the vaccine. The vaccine is the saviour abroad. The vaccine is saving the industry in London, saving the industry in New York, where they're starting to emerge because the people have been vaccinated. We have less than 300,000 people vaccinated so far. When is it going to happen? We understand the problems. We understand the protocols. We understand, the Minister of Health last night was telling us again how careful they're being. Bravo, but we're going to sit there with our hands tied until 
60% of the population of this country are vaccinated. Yep. Yep. Then we may be able to open yeah. theatres. And that is such an important point, Peter, because every single measure that we have now is but a stopgap measure. And ultimately, the only way we're going to be able to get out of this mess is if we get some kind of population immunity and people are, are, are being vaccinated. Absolutely. And that's why we've got to put pressure that while we wait for that, we've got to expedite it, but also we've got to make sure that people are supported. Absolutely. And that money was supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah it was meant pay to be. Pay it up. The, yes. It was meant to be the safety Find net. it and pay it. Yes. yes. And if you can't, you will be fired. Yes. But also find it before you do. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, uh, joining me on, on, on the show. And um, and like I said, the commitment to you, to Tammy um, and, and to the both of you is that we're going to do everything that in our power to be able to to, to try and, and, and form some kind, get some kind of accountability Wonderful. for this. And let's applaud those guys okay, sitting yes. in there. Yeah. Yes, well, great. So those guys sitting in there. Next oh. week when I'm up there, I'm going to go and see them. Absolutely. Please. Definitely. Please. Absolutely. Well. We have to reward them. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, 40, 43 days. Oy. 43 oh, it's days. It's enormous. Is, it's a it's, massive time. It's massive. Yeah, it's really, yeah. yeah. We'll be back after this. the country. Over 1,000 full-time business process outsourcing jobs were created in the deer-run Western Cape through the skills development programs. Every library in Deer Letswana is getting free access to hundreds of online newspapers and magazines. And 120 million rand has been spent upgrading the Caledonian soccer stadium in Deer Letswana. On to this week's Dear at Work feature, we are joined by Solim Simanga, the Dear Gauteng Provincial Leader. Sally, welcome to the Inside Track. So excited to have you. Thank you very much. And uh, it's a pleasure to be with you and uh, with the viewers at home. Yes. Sally, we, uh, a couple of weeks ago, spoke to Mongani Baloy, who's the mayor of Midval, where we've been in government for almost 20 years now. And he's been able to, to highlight the, the beacon of excellence that Midval has been. But recently, we've also regained um, a, a power back in, in Tuane. So can you explain to our viewers what, would, what is the difference between having an outright majority like we've got in Midval versus the coalition government that we're in in Tuane and how we can be able to drive excellence um, when we've got an outright majority? Well, look, I mean, when you have an outright majority, then you have um, certainty in terms of um, the programs that you want to run in office. You have, um, you know, you don't have to uh, be pulled in all sorts of direction. You have made a promise to your, your electorates and you are delivering on that. Um, you know, when you are in coalition, you always have to, um, you know, be, a, you know, you, the brakes are sometimes put on the program where you would be threatened that uh, if you don't go this route, we are going to, um, you know, um, um, vote you out. <laughs> it has happened with me a, a number of times mm -hmm. where we realized that, you know, there were things that we were not principally agreeing on. Um, then you have a motion of no confidence being brought against you, um, you know, and, and unfortunately these things are happening behind the seats, um, yeah. you know, and on, on stage, you never get to see all these things. You never get to hear all these things unless you are part of those meetings. So it is better to govern on your own um, where you make a promise to the resident. 
it. Yeah. And you are able to be held totally to, you know, to account for those promises. Yeah. So that's what we want. We want to have a clear mandate, um, you know, where people are saying, we've heard what you're promising us, to, uh, what you're promising to do, um, go out and do, and do it. And we want to hold you to account. I think right now it hasn't been completely um, the case where, you know, um, instability has become the order of the day. Yeah. And I mean, but in spite of that, I mean, so, so, I mean, you know, now people, if the viewers at home must understand that in order for us to be able to govern outright and do what we set out to do, we've got to have the upper hand in, in our coalition governments or at least govern um, outright. Now, what has been one of the key sort of key deliverables that Mayor Randall, um, who has been, Randall Williams, who's been the mayor in Tuane, what has he been prioritizing for the people of Tuane since we got back? Back, um, in October? Well, there's been quite a number of things. I mean, as you rightly said in the intro, um, that now we are seeing, you know, the the, 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 the stadium that was world-class and one of the best um, cycling stadiums that we have in Africa uh, being renovated and going to be open again for international um, tournaments. We have done now over 6,000 potholes and we are now doing close on 7,000 streetlights a week that are now being repaired. Sure. Um, we are looking at ensuring that by the end of um, next month, from what I am being told, that there is going to be, um, you know, a, only a backlog of less than 10% in terms of the streetlights. Now, that is massive if you were to consider that Tuane is the third largest metro in the world yeah. um, and the biggest in Africa geographically. So if you were to calculate how many street lights, how many potholes need to be fixed, it's quite a lot. Yeah. But more than that, um, Sivir, uh, you know, when we, when, we, when we took over in 2016, uh, there was a, 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 let me call it a very big, big hole that we needed to feed uh, feel financially. There was a two billion rent deficit that the municipality was in. With. When we ended up uh, the first year, we had over 700 million rent in surplus yep. that we could then use to then start doing other things. The second year, we started buying uh, vehicles for the municipality. Um, you know, the municipality never had uh, vehicles, by the way. It was actually renting out, um, you know, it was renting vehicles from uh, a, a fleet management company, which was uh, costing the city. Uh, um, quite exorbitant. And we managed to start, you know, tracking that back. Unfortunately, the year that we had not been in office, all those gains had been reversed. And in fact, um, Mayor Randall had to start off by readjusting the budget and getting it passed because the administrators, A, passed a budget that has not, uh, uh, that, that, that was not even uh, uh, properly costed. And actually, um, you know, the budget that was passed was not even going to be properly financed. Mm. That means that you had projects that you had uh, committed to you had actually committed to so much that you're not even going to be able to turn finance. The Ultra General will come and says that is actually very, very much irregular and you cannot continue. So we are now having to start again Yo. from where we left from a surplus. We are now trying to build again from a deficit again. Yo. That was left in a matter of 10 months. And that's what we, uh, Mayor Randall, is now uh, working on. But, uh, you know, not all is lost. There's already a recovery plan. We are already seeing that the municipality is starting again to collect revenue um, as it's supposed to collect revenue. And with a projection, we should be back, um, you know, on a winning streak in no time. That's the big difference. So, I mean, Sally, it literally, the, the people of Tuane uh, have an obligation to keep the coalition of corruption and all these other people, particularly the ANC, from hollowing out this, this, this metro. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, we have had um, only about um, four years, if I may call it that, of trying to undo um, what has uh, been done since the dawn of democracy. Sure. I mean, when we took over, um, you had one company being paid five million rand a day for doing absolutely nothing, taking care of 27,000 meters. And you had, you know, to really start reversing all these things, you know, plugging in the holes and making sure that you're able to then focus. Mm. There's quite exciting things that are happening. By the way, the president is now claiming victory over the the the, 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 the Ford Motor Company um, investment in Swana. But, you know, what he failed to then tell the people of Swana is that that is happening because of the DA difference. Yeah. We engaged with Ford. We said to Ford, um, you know, what is... What is it that you need to do in order for you to be competitive? I remember being in that meeting myself. What do, you need, what do you need to be competitive? And they said to us, look, 
we need to widen the road. We need to make sure that we get an extra piece of land. We need to have access to electricity that is going to be stable throughout. And then we can then discuss and talk about other things as we go. And we made all of that possible. Yeah. And we are committed, even with BMW, when they were threatening to, um, you know, to cut down and leave, we went there and we engaged with them and we said, how can we, from a government perspective, know as we might be at a, at a municipal level, yes. but how do we then work with you and make sure that these things do happen? Yeah. But that's the DA difference that we are bringing, um, you know, to the fore. Unfortunately, others will come there and claim victory over things that, uh, you know, um, aren't done um, by yeah. us. But I think our residents deserve to know that uh, the DA is indeed working for them and is yeah. doing everything that they can to make things happen and make life a whole lot better for them. Yeah. Right now, I can give you another example when we took over, the city was paying over um, 340 million rent, um, you know, to give each uh, and every person who, would, who had a device, um, you know, 500 max um, of data a day. We are now giving over a data, uh, we are giving over a, a, a gig of data to any resident in the city, so, and free of charge, by the way, and we have much more coverage than what we took over, and it's costing us half, if not less, of what it initially cost um, the, 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 the then government party. Yeah. So that yeah. is the difference for you. And it just shows you, Sally, a functioning local government literally will will make, will make will create a thriving environment for business, for jobs, and generally for, for a, a, just a thriving metro. And I mean, so we're going to be going to the local government elections in the next couple of months, um, and you leading the organization and leading the DA in, in the Gauteng. What is going to be your message to the people of Gauteng generally? in various municipalities about what we aim to do um, should they elect us and give us a chance? Well, we need, we need to be elected with a clear majority. We need to be elected so that we have certainty in terms of being in office. We need to be elected so that we can pass correct budgets. We can budget properly. We can have pro proper project management um, in, you know, in all our programs throughout the municipalities that we are targeting. In fact, I've made a commitment um, you know, to my team here in Gauteng that we're not only targeting a certain number of municipalities, we're targeting all the municipalities because the people of Gauteng in general deserve to have functioning municipalities. Mm. You know, we can talk about service delivery Service delivery doesn't happen at the so-called provincial level. It doesn't happen at a national level. It happens on the ground. Absolutely. The fact that you need water that is running, you need sewer that is um, you know properly taken care of, you need um, you know electricity that is properly um, supplied. You need to have metro police where you have metro police being able to be a 24-hour service that you offered and not just uh, people hiding behind trees at a corner collecting um, you know fines uh, for speeding, but mm -hmm. they are there to ensure that bylaws are actually implemented. You able to then ensure that. Uh, you know, people have um, a call center, municipal call center, an interface with government, you know, at the, at the local level where issues are able to then speedily be, um, you know, being addressed. So what we are saying to the people of, uh, of, of, of Gauteng or different municipalities in Gauteng is that the DA has demonstrated that they can govern. Yeah. Um, you know, they we've demonstrated that we can do things better and we want to continue to do things better. But we need the vote in order for us to be able to do that. I always say extend for your loss may age sound sound exactly. If I vote for you leave me alone, it's not going to work anymore. We need people to get involved. We want people to then say, how do I go out there and convince others that the DA is the way to go? So if you're voting for us, good, and we appreciate it. But what we need is you to get involved in the campaign and get more people to vote for us so that we can get the majority that we need in different numbers of municipalities and we can save this ship from sinking. I'm Absolutely. not saying it. The, the reports are saying it that are coming from the uh, the, the, the MEC's office that, uh, you know, our housing municipalities are becoming more and more dysfunctional sure. because, A, you don't even have, um, you know, the reserves that you need to have in terms of your your your. Um, your, 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 your cash in the bank to be able to run a municipality. In certain instances, municipalities have actually run quite uh, dry. And in certain instances, they cannot even afford to put diesel in trucks to go and collect waste. Now, in that instance, that tells you that, you know, if we're not going to come in service delivery is going to take a nosedive more and more, and we are going to have municipalities that we will not be able to then turn around if we don't do it right now. Absolutely. And Sally, I just want to say thank you to you and your team in Gauteng and give a massive shout out to Mayor Randall Williams for us and, uh, and his team and say, keep doing on the good work. Thank you very much, Rio, and uh, thank you for, for the opportunity.
We will be back after this. Africa. We will continue to hold government to account for the shockingly slow pace of vaccine rollouts in South Africa as we inch closer and closer to a possible third wave. And we will continue fighting for all South Africans, including our treasured artists and performers, as the right to earn a living continues to be trampled by national government. We have some exciting developments this season of the Inside Track, including the introduction of a fantastic new co-host who will make his debut next week. Until next time, keep it tight, Mzansi. Thank you.